I was wondering what happens when you upgrade your PC while it's on. So I think for today's video, let's go through and upgrade all the parts of our computer, of course, while it's on. I think the best one to start off with is probably going to be the RAM. Um, while I think a lot of us agree that RAM is one of those things that you tend to upgrade, uh, let's see what we can find out in the department of um, RAM upgrades. So to start off, let's just pop out some RAM. Well, right off the bat, um, we've lost all the uh, control of the computer. It is still on, though. Um, I've got the laptop. What's just to happen if I just pop this sucker out? Now that's a lot of damage. Absolutely no control, though. Quick disclaimer. It is very likely and probable when you start removing parts and components that what you can potentially, especially with RAM, make contact in places that you shouldn't. And it's still on, surprisingly. I'm actually pretty impressed. Like, this is still on. Now, I have absolutely no control over it. And I highly doubt me putting it back in is going to change anything. Well, there's our RAM upgrade, everybody. Um, we've replaced the RAM. Surprisingly, it hasn't done anything, interestingly enough. Like, I'm not getting anything. So why exactly is this happening? Well, my guess is that the operating system's instructions are usually loaded up into the RAM. And since we've removed the RAM, we've pretty much done a wipe of it, so there is no data, and then we've put it back in it's going to be written with and initialized with pretty much random data. You throw it back in there and it's going to have no idea what to do with it, especially because basically the operating system probably got hung up somewhere that had instructions written on that RAM. And now that that RAM, if you couldn't find it, it's probably hung up. And now it's probably initialized with garbage. So you're going to have a RAM stick that's pretty much useless or at least with no information. So interestingly enough, we're just still vibing out here with literally nothing um, I'm going to give it a restart and see if we broke the computer. Now, I fully expect that, likely, we shouldn't have any issues. A restart should solve most of our issues if they are existing, and I, as I expected, we're booting up just fine. As I said, though, I wouldn't recommend taking out parts just because you don't want to make contact in places you shouldn't and fry parts that you really need. Um, this is why you let the people on YouTube do stupid stuff for you. As you can see, we're booting up into Windows just fine, surprisingly. I think next up it's time to upgrade the graphics card. Now, I don't believe we have integrated graphics on this at all. So I think it's fair to say that we should, obviously we're going to lose graphical contact. And as I expected, Windows is having no problem booting up whatsoever. Now you got to keep in mind that some of these parts are designed for stupidity, like, yes, we expect that sometimes bad things will happen, especially when you're developing parts like this. Um, and especially with RAM, I'd be very cautious of just because, yeah, I'd be cautious with doing this because you could e also easily corrupt your computer. Something could be written to it and you would hate to lose your important data because you forgot to upload or, you know, just you just removed a disk. So I think it's time we do a graphics card update. So I think we are good to go. Now I don't know if I want to use the screwdriver and I don't know if I want to use my finger or not. Now our computer is also on at the moment. Um, and this is our graphics card. As I said, I wouldn't recommend doing this for, well, anything you plan to actually keep, but we can give this a shot now as well. I'm interested to see if we actually have graphics now. No, that's what I thought. We don't even have spinning contact. That might have done the graphics card in. Now, I have a hunch, however, that the computer is still working fine because I still do hear disk read and writes. I just don't know if our graphics card is going to be okay. Let's give it a reboot. 
And our graphics card is still just fine as well. So it looks like likely what I think happened is it just lost its uh, power and uh, didn't lose any data. And obviously I'm trying really hard not to move or slide anything because sliding those pins of course can result in damage to electrical components. And obviously removing things in the middle of you can corrupt things. There's a lot of things that can happen that are bad with this. Um, you can corrupt graphics card biases. Oh, uh, yeah. Now it thinks we're really screwed up because it's doing disk checking. Likely that means that it probably sent something over and it probably got hung up. And that's what I would expect is the system. And it's fixing the graphics card or the drive. I would not be surprised. I really would not be surprised. Um, I, I'm not surprised at all that this is happening. And as you can see, we can get right into Windows without a problem. So, interestingly enough, uh, I think it's time for the hard drive and then a CPU upgrade. So I think to start off, obviously we need to put in a new hard drive. So, this one is actually a more interesting one because most of the time, Windows is actually able to detect that there is a problem. And I'm going to explain a little bit of the background here, but basically most of the operating system when you boot things up or at least the most important parts are loaded up into the RAM. So when you remove the hard drive, it has an error trying to talk to the hard drive and pull the, you know, the new information that needs to run the operating system. But the operating system for the most part, at least for a little bit is on the RAM. So let's upgrade that. So I expect a blue screen of death, BSOD all the way. And so here we are. Here's BSOD time, and I'm gonna count five. So we've got a little bit, and we've actually got, um, we, don't, we don't have the Windows key, but we have mouse movement, and now we're lagging. We've, we have no hard drive, and we are lagging. Pretty bad, actually, because I'm assuming a lot of the threads, a lot of the tasks are the running BSOD. I'm expecting BSOD. And it's actually, it might just completely error out. But we, for that little bit of time, we had no hard drive, and we were, and there we go. Um, and it looks like we, that's about all we got. I'll have to go back through the footage to see what that error was. But I assume it's something like, you idiot, unplugged the hard drive, and now it's not going to be able to boot into anything. Um, so this is most likely the most likely to corrupt your drive. Like, in the dead center of writing to it, you just cut it off. I didn't remove the power from the drive, I just removed the data port, um, which we're already getting some interesting errors here. So most importantly, let's plug it back in and see if we have Windows that can boot from this. I'm pretty interested to see if Windows is going to be able to repair this. Obviously it just, in a sense, mimics uh, immediate heart. Um, yeah, it's really hard for me to understand, especially the worst thing you can do is remove the data port and let the hard drive keep spinning. That's, and it's completely, looks like the disc might even be gone. Um, I've plugged it back in, it looks like the disc is gone. Uh, that means the hard drive, I'll have to see if it's reformatted or it's just a, a dead drive now, because it looks like it's, don't recommend pulling out the data port while still having it plugged in, because that sucker is in the middle of writing something, and it can just go, I, I don't even know how bad, someone might go down in the comments and say how bad that is. I, that, that cannot be a good picture in my head, letting the data pin in the middle of write, who knows, it could write in the ones, write in the zeros. Oh yeah, and then, mm, mm. it can just keep on going for as long as you have at least 7,200 RPMs per minute. So let's see if we can get, it's just up and working long enough to do a CPU upgrade while it's on. Looks like we've got Windows Boot Manager running up. And then we've got the, I think I have a USB in the back here. Okay, save and exit. Let's see if we're going to get a um, Windows or we're gonna get I'm really interested to see how bad Windows actually has to go through and do this, something with this though. Like, Windows is gonna have no idea, and I'm sure there are safety features on the drive, so in case it does lose data, uh, it doesn't keep writing, at least I'd hope not. Uh, be interesting to see if we get any Windows action in here, um, or if we just fail booting into all together. So hopefully we get a little Windows icon and I don't have a dead disk. Okay, so Windows, is at least still alive. Um, Microsoft, uh, Bill Gates is not too happy with me at the moment. Um, man, don't try this at home, guys. Next is the CPU upgrade. 
and I don't know how I'm going to get this to boot while removing the CPU. Now I'm curious on how we should upgrade the processor because obviously it's very difficult to be able to remove the processor while also still having it cooled. That's very difficult. Obviously if we remove the power supply and upgrade the power supply, the whole thing is just gonna shut off and I don't think that's really worth uh, including in this video. If we replace the motherboard, obviously we're going to lose the system. If we replace the power supply, we're gonna lose the system and we've replaced the RAM and the graphics card so far. Let's uh, try for that CPU. And it looks like we can just log in just fine. Impressive. And there we go. We have regular Windows working just fine. So CPU upgrade time, guys. I don't know how I'm going to get this cooler off. So we can upgrade the cooler probably while it's on. I do expect it to thermal throttle. I'm sure I need a different screwdriver. So upgrading the cooler is going to pretty much end up with the, the computer shutting down. I'm assuming for a thermal overheat. We are still working though, surprisingly. Is it CPU upgrade time? Oh, we lost lights. Lost control of, uh, there we go. We lost control of the keyboard, guys. Keyboard just went straight out. And there went the entire computer. It is still on, but we have lost We've lost the blue screen and it's still spinning. Notation, it's time to go. So, the point of this story is, let's see if this boots up after I like let this sit because, man, is this everything you should not do in a computer. This sucker is hot as heck. And I don't think I managed to nick any of the pins on the motherboard other than my finger. My finger is not feeling too spicy at the moment. Let's put our cooler back on. I'm surprised. Like, we had a good couple of minutes and it didn't even die because of the without cooling. I was kind of impressed there. It looks like the answer is no. It's not fried. It's still booting up just fine. So what have we learned today? Well, first off, you can do a lot of stupid stuff with a computer. I didn't actually think you could. Um, surprisingly... Everything here got upgraded and nothing broke uh, or actually removed from the online or yeah, removed from the powered on system. Uh, as I said, wouldn't recommend this. Be very careful if you have a cut finger that has a highly conductive liquid. Um, obviously, don't do something stupid with that. And uh, don't cut your finger on the freaking fan. Um, freezer 19 CO. Uh, that thing will uh, rearrange your fingers. Be careful. And we can log in just fine. I'm interested to see if everything is just working fine. Um, I was interested to know that like with only what I think happened in that first latch that I undid is we, we lost keyboard input. We lost the whole keyboard went dark, but we also still had the screen. So I have a hunch that the certain pins that control the um, USB drive on the bottom where it was, you know, lifted out of the socket. Those didn't make contact, while I think that the processing and some of the graphics still did. Um, and then when we popped, obviously popped the rest off, it wasn't having any contact whatsoever. And so there was nothing left to be powered. I just found that very interesting that um, once the CPU was out, however, it, the, the whole motherboard stayed on. That was very interesting. Um, and it even looked like the Ethernet port was blinking. So I'm curious to see what that was like as well. And obviously, if you're a much more in-depth than this, obviously go down in the comments and let me know. Um... But I just find that very interesting, some of the observations that we've discovered today in today's video. Um, but yeah, no, everything seems to work fine. Just make sure everything is working fine, and then, uh, yeah, I think we just put it back on the shelf. Yeah, we've got um, still all registered logical processors in course. So, point of the story is, guys, um, don't upgrade your PC at home, but it doesn't look like it's too bad if you do. Wouldn't still try it, though.